Morning folks and welcome back. Well, it's definitely starting to feel autumnal around here. I've had to light my, my fire out here this morning just to take the chill off. Um, I'm out in my garage today because I need to do a repair to my canoe. While on a canoe trip recently in Scotland, I hit a semi-submerged rock uh, in a section of Whitewater River. Um, I didn't see it, it wasn't obvious, it was a sort of flat slabby rock and by the time I'd noticed it I was already committed to my line. I didn't realise how bad the damage was at first until we were paddling across Loch Ness at the end of that river section when I noticed I was taken on water. Um, I did have some duct tape with me so I was able to get over to the side and, and do a patch uh, enough to get me to camp that night and then uh, one of the other lads um, had some better better tape which I put on and that um, that well that did a sort of temporary repair to the end of the trip, so all wasn't lost. Um, I've since been sent some amazing tape from the States, um, stuff called uh, Flex Tape, um, which is you know designed for waterproof repairs. You can put it on um, you know materials that are wet or dry, and um, it's supposed to be amazing, really, really um, flexible, and uh, and seals really well. So I'm going to be including that in my in my kit from now on for sure. So thank you, Kimberly, hugely for sending that over. That will definitely become part of my permanent canoe repair kit. Apologies for any road noise during the video. Um, my garage is quite close to the road and although it's not a very busy road, there's bound to be the odd bit of traffic noise. Right then, let's take a look at the patient. I actually cracked the hull in four places <laughs> uh, hitting that rock. I did quite a bit of damage, um, but one of the cracks is particularly bad and that's the one that was letting in water. So this is it here. Uh, extends from here where my thumb is uh, right the way up to about here um, that's 18 inches and as you can see if I just zoom in if I press here you can see that it's actually cracked the wood and the fiberglass on both sides so it's quite a nasty bit of damage uh, that crack is right through the center of one of the strips this boat is made from strips of cedar with uh, a molding on both sides so they kind of interlock and it's actually split the that that strip right the way down the middle. So I'm gonna either have to try and glue it, but if I can't do that, um, I'm gonna need to cut that strip out and uh, replace it with a new bit of wood. Right, the first thing I'm gonna do is to cut away some of this fiberglass here where it's delaminated and it's all lifted along here it's actually taken the wood with it in places so there's some of the wood attached to that fiberglass but you know I can't do anything with that that's all gonna have to be cut away Well, <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know how well that's gonna show up on camera, but there's a section here, there's a bit of wood here, which is just split both ways. It's caused a great big V underneath here. Um, yeah, it's just match wood. I'm gonna to have to replace that strip, I think, because there's no way I'm gonna be able to glue that back in and make that strong again. You know, it's just, that's had it. Look, <laughs> this is the strip that I'm gonna cut out or a section of it. Um, you can see that there's an edge of it here and another edge here. If I just pan across, you can see where the damage is there. So if I cut all of that out from that edge there, that is the edge of the strip. The other one running up here. So hopefully if I cut that out, I could tidy up the, the joint where it joins onto the good strip either side and I can just piece a new piece in. And there's a sand in there, look. <laughs> Loch Ness sand. Right, I've just taken the fiberglass off down to the wood so I can see a little bit more easily what I'm doing. The crank actually extends down and into this strip here. So I'm gonna replace 
two strips. A section of that one, and a section of that one. This is a piece of the cedar strip that I built my boat from and as you can see it's got a moulding along each edge running all the way along. It's got a, a bead mould on one side which is rounded this way and then it's got a concave coving mould along the other side and it's designed so that the strips interlock and it allows for the curvature of the boat. As I, as I was building it these were glued together and that just allows it to, to curve and you've still got that glue contact in that joint in there. So I now need to shape the inside edges where I've just cut those strips out to match these. So where that bit goes against I'm going to need to have a cove mould, so I'm going to have to shape that and on the other side I'm going to have to have it rounded over so that it accepts the strip that way and locks back in place again and is nice and strong. Putting the bead moulding on the edge of the cedar is straightforward enough. Uh, I just used a chisel and sandpaper and just kept checking with that little offcut just to make sure it fitted. But doing the other moulding, the cove moulding, um, is not quite so easy because I've got to kind of create a concave, um, you know, and get in there somehow. Um, when I made the strips for this canoe, I used this cutter here and um, in a router table that just makes short work of it. You run your pieces of wood along and it just cuts that, that little moulding. Um, but obviously I can't do that with the strips already fixed to the boat. I can't get my router in there. There's, there's just not enough room to get that cutter in there. So I'm going to use um, a small carving chisel, one of my granddad's old chisels, and I think that's probably just about right. It might be a bit shallow, but I can, you know, go in from two different angles and hopefully make it about about right. Right, I've got my two strips cut and dry fitting there. Okay, they're not perfect, but it's certainly better than it was. Um, any gaps along here will be filled with the uh, epoxy glue, which I'm gonna mix up. The glue is, is kind of a filler as well, so um, that will just take up any, any uh, gaps and things, and that should be absolutely fine. I've scarfed the ends just to give me a bit more gluing surface where they join to the existing strips at either end. 
um, you know, just cut them on the angle, just so there's a bit more, a bit more glue in contact there. It should make it stronger. Before I glue those in, I'm going to sand back the other three cracks and just machine the crack out, and then uh, I can fill those at the same time as gluing these up. <laughs> Right, that is uh, all machined out and ready to go. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy now. Um, I used West Systems epoxy. Uh, I was recommended when I built this canoe and, um, and I found it to be brilliant, to be honest. Um, I've got some uh, microfibers, which I'm gonna mix with it. And, um, and then I've got a load of cedar um, sanding dust, which I'm gonna mix in with it as well, just to get a, a sort of nice brownie color. Right, that is as much as I can do now, because uh, I need to wait for that epoxy to dry. Um, I've glued the strips in and tidied it up uh, on the outside and climbed underneath and tidied it up on the inside. Make sure there's no gaps and, and things um, and just great big lumps of epoxy hanging down because it's really hard when it comes to sanding. It takes a lot of sanding to sand it back down flat again. Um, and I've filled the, uh, the cracks that I machined out, that I routed out. So uh, I need to wait for that to dry now. I'll keep checking on it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be several hours. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and do some other stuff, and um, I'll come back to this later. That's had about nine hours of drying time and I've just tested it with my Stanley blade and it's dried good and hard. I have had heat on out here all day. I've got a small uh, plug-in radiator, so it has been warm in here and heat does have a big effect on curing time with epoxy. The warmer it is, the faster it will cure. Um, so it's time to sand now. I need to sand all of that smooth and flat. That is all sanded nice and smooth. I can't actually feel it at all. It just sort of blends in with the, the hull of the canoe, which is good. So this is the fiberglass I'm gonna be using. It's a woven fiberglass cloth uh, left over from when I built the canoe. It's a fabric, it comes on the roll um, and you can cut it with scissors. And when it's wetted out with uh, resin with epoxy it sets and becomes really tough and really hard um, fiberglass boats cedar strip boats are very tough um, but obviously they have their they have their limitations and the rock in that river <laughs> was definitely the limit of my boat 
Um, so I'm going to cut some strips now to go over the repair I've done. I'm just going to cut it bigger than the repair so it overlaps. Um, and also cut some strips to go over the, the filler repairs for the, um, for the smaller cracks. I've mixed up some epoxy and it's time to stick this fiberglass down. Uh, it's just dry at the moment, just resting on there um, and I've positioned it carefully so that I've got a good overlap over the repair um, but I've also made sure that I've sanded well beyond that. You need to sand so that you have a good key onto the surface there so the, fiber, so the uh, epoxy sticks. Um, this boat is varnished over the over the epoxy, you have to do that with epoxy, and I'll explain about that when, when we get to that stage. Um, so yeah, just sand back beyond where you wanna where you wanna go. So what I'm gonna do is just pour it on, and then uh, spread it out with my spreader here. The fiberglass will go clear, but I want it to end up with a matte finish. I don't want it to be any shiny, glossy bits. If there are, there's too much resin, and that can cause the the fiberglass cloth to raise up off the canoe. I don't want that to happen. I want it to stick down, stick down good. Spread it out from the middle to the outside. You need to make sure you get any air out. It might be underneath. You just spread that resin out properly. There you can see that the fiberglass has gone completely transparent, but it's got that dull look to it. That will become shiny once we put on the, the next layers of fiberglass resin, which then fill the weave, and then you end up with that, with that glossy, smooth finish. Well, that's it. That's all I can do this evening. I'll let that dry overnight. The fiberglass cloth is on, everything is covered, everything is wetted out and I'll um, come back in the morning and uh, start filling the weave. Epoxy has cured overnight and I've just sanded the edges, feathering them and blending them to the original shape of the fiberglass on the hull. I've also gone over the, the flat part of the cloth as well just to create a nice key so we get a good mechanical bond to the next coat of epoxy. I've got to apply these coats with a roller. It'll need at least two coats and that will just fill the weave, fill the gaps in the weave and make it all nice and smooth again. I've left that for about five hours and I've caught it so that the epoxy is still in the gel state, which means it hasn't fully cured. That way I can just apply the second coat of epoxy straight over the first without having to sand it. I'll get a good chemical bond between the two coats. Well, we're very nearly there. It's had all the epoxy it's gonna have and now it's time to varnish. One of the downsides of using epoxy is that it's damaged by UV light. So unless you put something on it to, to protect it, um, over time the, the epoxy will break down. I'm going to use a, a marine grade polyurethane varnish which has UV inhibitors in it. I'm going to sand the whole hull down, not just the areas where I've repaired, but I'm going to try and get rid of some of the scratches left from my canoe trip. And, and then I'll need to give it a really good wash, get rid of all of that sanding dust, otherwise that can react with the, with the varnish and stop it from curing properly. So yeah, sanding washing and then varnishing.
The hull is sanded, washed and dried. You can see I didn't do all of the hull, just the bottom part where the, where the scratches and the repairs are. Um, there was no point in me doing the sides of the hull, that was actually varnished not that long ago. But that sanding has just created a nice key, ready to take the varnish. That is it, done. Well, half done. I ran out of varnish. I ordered uh, a new tin, but um, it didn't arrive in time to do the video, so I just used up what I had left in, in an old tin. It got me about halfway through the first coat, so I've still got to finish that off and do a second coat and do the inside, which I haven't done yet. Uh, I've got to go through the whole process again, all the sanding and everything um, on the inside. But that's a job for another day. I'm pretty happy with it. It's not perfect by any stretch. The uh, epoxy darkened the cedar where I joined the new strips onto the old um, and where I did the, the repairs on the other cracks. It's just darkened the, the cedar a bit, so it accentuates it a bit, um, which I wasn't expecting. But hey, they're war wounds. Why not show them off? I'm uh, more concerned about it, um, you know, doing what it's supposed to do, and that's staying afloat. Uh, looking pretty is, is secondary. But she'll certainly live to fight another day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.